Good afternoon, this is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. My name's Matt Westerhold, and I'm the executive editor of the Sandusky Register. And my guest today is Jennifer Ashburn, a city, a Sandusky City Commission candidate. We're going to meet uh, Jennifer Ashburn in just a moment. But before we do, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors. For Erie, uh, for Erie County residents, age 60 and better, if you need help, Call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. This is the third candidate's interview we've done on Between the Lines. Uh, we interviewed Steve Pajali, a candidate for Sandusky City Commission, uh, a, week as, a week ago or so, and Tim um, Schwanger yesterday. Uh, you can see all of our programs on demand at YouTube, Sandusky Register's YouTube channel. I want to introduce Aaron Caldwell, is producing this segment of Between the Lines. Aaron, you want to say hello? Hello. And with that, we'll meet Jennifer Ashburn. Hi, hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for being on Between the Lines. It's I, good to see you again. I am so honored to be here. As we said before the show started, when I lived in Washington, D.C., I didn't run from one television station to another television station. And so this is, you know, I love being in Sandusky. You're, you're, you're on, you're in demand. Ah, for the moment. Yes. And you, you mentioned when you lived in Washington, D.C., we should say you were a, a teacher. Yes, I was. In the Fairfax. Fairfax schools. County Public Schools for 30 years. Which is, you know, one of the most successful school districts in the country, isn't it? Yes, and one of the wealthiest. Every student has a laptop. Uh, you know, way back then, and I've been retired 10 years. Has it been that long? Because I remember when you moved home. Yeah. And your father was Reverend Ashburn. Reverend Ashburn at Second Baptist Church for 30 which years. Which is on Decatur Street? On Decatur Street. The yeah. oldest African American church in the yeah. city. Yeah. yeah. It's right there on Decatur Street. One of the stops on the Underground Railroad. Yes. But I have learned that there are many, there were many stops, mm -hmm. you know. And growing up, I thought that we were the only one. No, I've learned there were many stops. Sandusky was very active. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. And you retired after how many years? 35. 35. And you moved back to Sandusky. And you, did you always intend to move back? No, no. The reason I moved back was, um, well, I came back and a friend of mine was in a crack house in MacArthur Park. And I thought, I have to do something. A friend of yours yeah. was addicted? He was addicted, mm -hmm. living in the crack house. And it's different when you're in D.C. and you see people like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Then when you come home and it's your friends and your family members and people you know. And so what was I going to do? Was I going to take the plop that it, Fairfax County gives you a plop at retirement of $60,000? And then I had just refinanced my home in D.C. Mm -hmm. and I had $100,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. Was I going to take the, the blessing that I had mm -hmm. and just travel, which is what I really wanted to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or was I going to, was I going to help in my community? It was, it was hard, but it wasn't a hard decision because mm -hmm. I heard my father in my head saying, mm -hmm. do what I'm telling you to do, mm -hmm. which you did. You know, in my mm -hmm. generation, you obeyed mm -hmm. your elders. Mm -hmm. So right away, not right away, but over the next 10 years, I've renovated the house and the, the um, apartment building in MacArthur Park. You bought, you, you I, moved to MacArthur Park. I moved Park. to MacArthur Park. I bought it. We renovated the building. It was a speakeasy called Joe Willie's Place and the Crack House. We moved the Crack House and Joe Willie moved out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are now three reputable, mm -hmm. reputable tenants mm -hmm. there who pay their rent on time. That was your intention. That was my intention. You know, it is my, it was my intention to do the whole park. I, you know, because in my naivete, I thought $160,000 was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is a lot of money. <laughs> but when it comes to construction, it goes like that. Yeah, it seeps yeah. through the... So, you know, and then I got sick. You know, I, I had uh, diabetes. 
And yeah. I had to leave the um, D.C. area and come to the Cleveland Clinic mm -hmm. because nobody in D.C. could sit, tell me what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. it took four days for the Cleveland Clinic to diagnose it mm -hmm. and to give me the proper medication for gastroparesis. Mm -hmm. My stomach muscles had frozen. Mm -hmm. And then all my doctors were here. So with between MacArthur Park and me being sick, Having invested all my retirement in MacArthur Park, and then being sick, mm -hmm. I had to be, I had to stay here. I had to stay here, and now it's wonderful being here. I mean, you're glad you moved home. I'm glad I moved home, but it was adverse circumstances that made that me led you, that uh -huh. led me to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like telling a kid to eat your spinach because it's going to help you take castor oil. You don't want to do that. However, <laughs> and now you know. I'm running between television shows. I get running for city commissioner. I have a chance to make a real change. So what? What? What was? Did you always intend to run for city commissioner? No, 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 no. Well, you know, I I asked the city. I mean, I I went to city commission meetings and I said, there are abandoned buildings in a MacArthur Park. Give me a mortgage from the land bank. I will give it right back to you. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, you give me a $48,000 mortgage, yeah. here, here's the $48,000 right back. Mm -hmm. I have the building, and then I renovate it just like I did with my retirement mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. the, this building. Mm -hmm. And I was ignored. I mean, ignored, and when I presented it to the city commission at that meeting, they, they giggled, they laughed at me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, it was very subtle, mm -hmm. but I could tell I was being ridiculed, and and then I had several times that I talked to Jonathan Holliday, and several times that I talked to Ed Wapsner. You know, I, I didn't talk to um, Eric Brady, Wooster. Eric Wooster, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. That's right. I didn't talk to um, uh, Mr. Murray or Mr. Brady person personally, mm -hmm. but at the um, mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm meetings he had in the different parks, right. I would go and he would tell me to be quiet, to not talk. And I'm like, really? You know, I no, it, it just didn't sit. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. There, was, there you go. It wasn't working. And then the, the crowning blow was it, that the three people in the, that lived in the house across the street from me, they got evicted. Mm -hmm. They were living there. It was a, a, a habitable building. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city is saying that they're just tearing down blight. Okay, mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. blight in MacArthur Park. You can't deny that. However, there were three p families living there. In the building in across the, the street. building yeah. across the street from me. Josh, who owned the building, offered it to me. I asked the city if I could get a mortgage from there. I was ignore completely. So Josh showed it to the city, but the city wouldn't buy it unless it was vacant. And so Josh evicted those three people. Mm -hmm. Now he says that I'm hearing through the great friend that he put them in other housing, but the one family said to me they were going to a homeless shelter. So I, you know, and, and, and I don't know. And so this is what propelled you to decide to run for city commissioner? This is what told me to run for city commissioner, because if you're not in a position of power, a position, a, a position of power, and if you if you don't have any money, you know you're not going to be in a position of power. But you can be in an elected position, you know you can get elected, and when you are elected, then you have a voice. So I was trying to find a voice so that I could better serve my community, you know, and my immediate community is MacArthur Park. Have you been out there? The land is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got the park is beautiful. You know, and the rest of the Sineski is too. Downtown has done well. You know, they've done well with it. You can't argue with that. But that same enthusiasm needs to come back to the neighborhood. That same money needs to come back to the neighborhoods. And it's there. But if I'm not on the commission, or, or if the same people are there, that's not going to be the case because that's not their priorities. And they have proven such. I mean, I'm not talking about something that I heard. I'm talking about something that I know. I have been laughed at in front of the city commission meeting and ignored. And they're doing the same thing to the rest of Sandusky, to the residents of Sandusky. You know, if you're a tourist and everything, that's fine, you know. That's just so, but I don't even know the words to say it. It's so doable to 
to fix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because we're in a democracy. You know? So, um, I, you know, I find it very interesting what you're saying and and, and uh, your your point of view. Mm -hmm. And and what 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 will be your top priority? What will be the first thing you want to fix? There's, I think you know. There's several. Well, there's several. I okay. There's several. First, there's several first. All right. Well, please okay. tell, tell us. What the one that's on the ballot is the ward system. I think that if we vote yes for issue two, mm -hmm. that the people will have the representation on the city commission that I did not have as uh, before. Okay. Before I started running. There will be different wards and the person that lives in my ward will be on the commission and they are running over the same raggedy streets that I am. They're walking in the same dark without street lights as I am. Their neighbors are being evicted as I am. They come to me as the city commission because I live there and I will address their viewpoints. Someone who lives on Cedar Point Road doesn't have the same concerns in Mark Garther Park as I do. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just the way it is, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. The way it has been has played out. Mm -hmm. The way it has played out. I see the sign up that's now that says vote no, don't divide Sandusky. Sandusky's divided now. How is Sandusky divided? Sandusky's divided between downtown and the rest of us. Okay. It is downtown and the rest of us. You know, downtown's fine to come, you know, for example. You like downtown. I, oh, I love downtown because I'm, I'm tired and I can eat out. <laughs> I, love, love, I love to eat out downtown, you know. However, but look at this. When I, when I started running, I, you know, the, I can eat downtown at, um, I won't name the restaurant, but this is what you I... You can if you want. Zinc Brassier. Okay, Am yes, I that yes. Oh. Zinc uh, Brassier, yes. Okay. I always get the same thing when I eat out. I get a glass of wine, I get the entree, I get a cup of coffee, and I get a dessert. Uh huh. Everywhere I go, that's what I get. <laughs> and I get that at, at, at the, the restaurant I mentioned, Sink, and it came to $49. Uh huh. That's just me. Uh -huh. I do that same thing at Barardi's, uh -huh. and it comes to $20. Uh huh. I do that same you thing. You just gave a plug for Berardi. Yeah, I love Berardi. And I live at Berardi's. Y'all know I do. For twenty dollars, mm -hmm. I do the same thing at Red Lobster, and it may be twenty-two dollars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Downtown is geared for tourists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't take my friends, you know, to eat with me to go to that restaurant I because see. it's too expensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can take everybody to. Berardi's. You love the restaurant, but it it doesn't fit your budget. It doesn't fit my budget and or the budget of the rest of us. The rest of us. The rest. The rest of us. Mm -hmm. You know. I, you know, I, I praise what they have done downtown because I know that if the priorities were changed, the same thing would be done in the neighborhoods. If they took that next $9 million in stimulus money that's coming down the pike mm -hmm. and put it to the neighborhoods, not $3 million to, um, to pay this stick that's going to have to be repaved in another five years or whatever, mm -hmm. and not during an election year. Mm -hmm. But if you do it to put it in concrete things in, in the neighborhoods for the rest of us, look, Sineski City Schools is absolutely fabulous. The new buildings are wonderful. During the school hours, why not after the school hours it can become a rec center? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what we did in Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. Fairfax, well, it's, they changed it to a year-round school. Mm -hmm. So in the regular school year, but in the summertime, the school was still open, mm -hmm. and they hired um, college kids mm -hmm. to, to uh, create curriculum for classes. Mm -hmm. Classes on basket weaving or judo or whatever. I did creative writing poetry mm -hmm. classes in the off season. Mm -hmm. But the school was always being used. The pool was always open. The gym was always open. The cafeteria was always open. We have everything right there between Sandusky High and the new school. There's three basketball courts. There's a planetarium. There's two stages. There's a little uh, brass lantern restaurant that, that students could be running. Take one million of the stimulus money that's coming back and open the school year round and use that money to pay, pay the people that are coming in. It would not only give the give the kids some place to go, but that, that 20 to 30 year old group of kids who don't know what they're doing, 
you know, don't have any idea of what to do, could give them jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, local kids. Local kids, yeah, local kids can give them can give them jobs. So you're proposing a partnership between the schools and the city. Yes, that doesn't yes. exist right now. There is a working relationship. There's but a nothing. working relationship, but but nothing like that. I call it city citizen partnerships. City citizen partnerships. And this is something that you would want to uh, push and make happen if you're elected city commission. If I'm commission. elected, this way. And, and how, um, you know, how would you rate your uh, skill set when it comes to persuasion? How, how will you convince other city commissioners to do as you say? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had good luck with that so far, but I'm hoping that the other, the other candidates that are running, you know, the ones that I know were on the same, the same wavelength kind of thing, you know. And so they have the best interests, I think, of the neighborhoods of the rest of us at heart. Mm -hmm. You know, not taking away anything from what the downtown pe people mm -hmm. have done. But you, you take, you, when, you're when you're taking care of the downtown, you're taking care of your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because you have a view of the bay that only you can see. Mm -hmm. And you own the downtown. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're taking care of yours, but take care but you but you can share that. Mm -hmm. You you can you can take care of us too. I mean here's a real wild vision I have. Okay. Okay. You know the two fifty ramp that comes down? Butler the, Street ramp. Not, yeah, the for Cedar Point people? Yeah. Okay. Don't turn off don't turn off, but go all the way to Sycamore Line mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and turn and go in front of Sand the newly renovated Sandusky Plaza mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. Sandusky Business. So you're envisioning, I'm envisioning it being this. newly renovated. I'm, I'm envisioning mm -hmm. it being new and renovated. Just like because I'm a part of, Le of uh, Leadership Erie County, mm -hmm, they took mm -hmm. us over to Cedar Point. Cedar Point builds whole cities. You know, it's like, why can't we do a city-citizen partnership with them mm -hmm. and turn turn the Sandusky Plaza into, you know, the, the Broadwalk arcade shops mm -hmm. that locals own? And right behind that is a doctor's office. Dr. Swanbeck was my doctor when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. Those offices there, why can't that be an incubator for small, for small business entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Sunday... At Sunday, um, the October 17th, young entrepreneurs are coming to MacArthur Park. They're going to set up a Get Out the Vote campaign. So this weekend? This weekend. They have the things that they sell, you know, jewelry and, and bags and food and their businesses. Mm -hmm. their, this, mm -hmm. their substantial business. Why can't we offer those young people a bit of mini mall out of those doctor's offices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to help them get their businesses off the ground. That's putting the money back into the neighborhoods, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. back into our children, back into places that families can afford. So this is, this is something that you plan to develop if you're elected city commissioner. If I'm a, it's a suggestion that I'm bringing forth. And how to persuade them that I can do this, that we can do this. Look what I did in MacArthur Park mm -hmm. on a retired teacher's salary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On a retired teacher's salary, I got rid of the speakeasy. I got rid of the crack mm -hmm. house. I got housing for poor for our poor. You know, they pay what they can pay. You know, it, you know. And I'm not any less off than that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the other thing I want to bring out. Just because you put money back into the... You aren't going to lose your view of the bay. Mm -hmm. You aren't going to lose your three boats and five cars. You'll still have everything that you have. Yeah. What was that you just said? <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how I've I, never heard that. I know that. Because you haven't talked to me. <laughs> it's been a while. But you've been home ten years. Ten now. years. I've been here ten years. And, and I know, I know your feeling about being transplanted back home because I at yeah. one time lived in the Washington Park. metropolitan area, and I in Tacoma Park. That's right in Silver Spring, and I came back home. So I know exactly what you're saying. It's you know in Washington, you know it's like you expect it. You know I don't. It's not as bad as it was back then. I don't mm. think. But when 
uh, but when you see it at home, you never would have imagined. It, exactly. It's Gentrification is a really good thing. I have a townhouse on Capitol Hill. When I moved there in 1980, there were drugs everywhere, and, and it was all Section 8. Okay. Then I got it really, I got it for $57,000. On Capitol Hill? On Capitol Hill. Cheap. You know, you can see the Capitol from my house. Now. You it, sold that house. No, I didn't. You still have because that Because it is financing MacArthur Park. Oh my gosh. It you was, still have, and you paid how much for 57. it? $57,000. right, so you're good with money. And it's, <laughs> it was just appraised at one point. Oh, you should talk about it. You know, and it's like, but when I go back, mm -hmm. none of the people who live there are there now. They're gone. Gone. Is it rented out? Oh, uh, my house, yeah. Okay. Yeah. To um, this. Okay. <laughs> Tell me what okay, to, Howard Medical Students. Okay. I, because I tried different tests. Sure. Howard Medical Students do nothing but eat, sleep, and study. Uh huh. And so then intense. at the end of three years, they leave because mm -hmm. they graduate. And the underlying social contract is that you will bring another doctor in. Mm -hmm. So I have these young. Young doctors, these young men who, you know, I haven't had any women yet, you know, who are just really studious and about what they're doing and going on, and they protect my property, and they and they know you? They know me, yet, yeah. oh And they appreciate, gosh, I have, I have my sons in Trinidad and South Africa and UK, <laughs> because they go everywhere. Sure. You know, when they graduate, they go everywhere. And, and they take care of the property. Mm -hmm. Never rent to freshman drama students. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay, that's, make a note. That's a disaster. <laughs> you know, drama students are a disaster. But medical students are great. They, because they eat, they Sleep, study. And they study. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And, and okay. they take care. Um, and they pay. They what pay. else? How, how are you going to win? How, how are you going to convince uh, the, uh, the largest number of voters to, to cast their ballot for you? Well, I hope they watch between the lines. Uh -huh. I hope they watch what I'm saying. I hope they watch between the lines. Yeah, too, if they listen sure. to what I'm saying. I have the signs up around. I have the rally that's coming up there. I serve as president of the National Council of Negro Women, mm -hmm. and I've enlisted the women and asked them if they will help. Now, they can't endorse me as a part of the national thing, but they all have helped. And you know, Nettie Cox has just been wonderful, mm -hmm. you know. and. Um, Amy Gruby mm -hmm. from the Democratic sure. Party, she has been supportive, you, you know, and so hopefully she'll get that out. Um, Tim, Tim Ryan, Congressman Ryan, he has encouraged me. Mm -hmm. He hasn't endorsed me, but I met him at the, um, their, their thing and I explained to him I was running. He let me take a picture with him and he encouraged mm -hmm. me how. Mm -hmm. I just hope by word of mouth and the, you know, the white community may not know what I've done in MacArthur Park, mm -hmm. but the black community mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but, but, so making sure the white community knows is something you want them to know. It's something I want them to know. It's, you know, and uh, if anyone, if anyone would like me to come to uh, your house to speak to your friends or your neighbors or whatever, I'd be more than happy to come uh, and, and, and help convince you that what we have here, if we work together, the same progress that has been made downtown can be made in the neighborhoods. Sandusky is a wonderful place to live, and it, it, it can be even better. It can be even better. We have no, not, no, no. I was going to say we have no place to go but up, but we could just stay the same. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. why not go up? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why, why not? Why not um, do? Why not do more? What? Why not do what the Lord has placed on your heart to do? Because mm -hmm. I, I, He just hasn't given this vision to me. He truly hasn't. I mean, there's care and share. Mm -hmm. There's the Ohio Grow thing that that gives out food and you know, Ogo. Ogo that gives out food. I mean, there are thousands, not thousands, but a lot of organizations in the city that if we would just come together mm -hmm. and work with the resources that the city has of millions of dollars, Sineski is the rich town. You know, Sineski has millions of dollars. But if you asked anybody on Farwell Street, you wouldn't know it. If you asked the people that live next to me at MacArthur Park, you wouldn't know it because it's not shared. So you, so they don't feel part of 
the city of Sandusky no. is success. Listen. So are you are you the candidate that's going to make them feel part of the success? I'll be their voice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be their voice. You know, their success is my success. I live in McGarden Park. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. their success and and. I liked living on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I really did. I like me. I like going there for vacation. I, you know, I live in. I don't really like living in MacArthur Park. But let's look. If MacArthur Park. Okay, okay. This is my, another story. Okay. <clears throat> I used to go to Martha's Vineyard every year uh -huh. because the, the the doctor in our school, the school psychologist, owned land, owned mm -hmm. houses there. So the teachers would go over to Phil's place. I mean, is it Phil? I think this is a long time ago. Anyway, we would go to his places on Martha's Vineyard every year, and it was a sleepy little island. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything for me to do, for me to do, since I did was not descended from the slaves of Oak Bluffs. Mm -hmm. I was not invited to the, okay. the black enclave on the island. I so, see. Okay. so I would hang around, you know. Th Clinton came. When Clinton came. The complex, the whole island changed again. There were more parties to go to. Everybody was more accepted. There were more people. You know, you know, it was, it was, it got really fun to go mm -hmm. to Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. But then the Obamas came. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is wonderful. Okay. All right. Now, 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 the question becomes: President Obama, do you like roller coasters? <laughs> he was here, yeah. He was, but I, I, that's when I first came back to the city and right. I couldn't get in to see him, right, but you know, right. I tried my hardest. Do you like roller coasters? If Obama would come here to vacation, mm -hmm. say, stay in a bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. MacArthur Park is the same thing as Martha's Vineyard. It's got those little circles. You know, we got a circle at MacArthur Park. We can put in little shops. We can put in barber shops. We can put housing. Is that your vision? That's my vision. That's my vision. Housing for the affluent there, but also housing for those who are not so affluent. Mm -hmm. Living next door to each other. Mm -hmm. You can, but but in renovated housing. And 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 the Obamas come to the bed and breakfast at MacArthur's Park. You think you can make that happen? Uh, surely. You can. Well, if we you know do, Sherry we'll Brown. be there. We know Sherry Brown. You really know um, Tim Ryan. We know Sher We know people who talk to him. Mm -hmm. But 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 women, there's nothing for him to come to now. He mm -hmm. can't stay out there now the way it is. But if we would work together, we could create that vision for the entire Sandusky. Do you know how much money the Divine Nine has? And I will. Do you know what I mean? The Divine Nine. No. All the black fraternities and sororities, A.K.A. Delta, Kappas, Qs. Um, a Phi A, Alpha Phi Alpha. Um, it's called the Divine Nine. Uh, our Vice President Kamala is a, as a, a AKA. Okay. Okay. So and she went to Howard. And she went to Howard. And she also so the Divine Nine has rallied around her. That is the upper whatever you know of black society. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. forever. They dis when they when when Obama went to Martha's Vineyard, the Divine Nine descended. Mm -hmm. And they spend lots of mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine them here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. They will. <laughs> they will. <laughs> oh, it will be so much fun. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, okay. Well, let's say I went, um, um, my hairdresser changed her shop. So I, out, out Perkins Avenue. And there's a place behind there called Shaker, Shaker um, Village. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and I've never been there, but since she moved her um, moved her shop to where Fort Music is and that little complex right okay. there, I decided while I waited to just go back there. It's beautiful. It's just it's Shaker, you know, okay. Yes, I think it's Shaker Village. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's beautiful. The houses are, and you can tell, there are very affluent people mm -hmm. living next door to people that aren't so affluent. Their yards have all the flowers and the doodads and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Their yard doesn't, but the grass is still cut. Mm -hmm. And the houses are very nice, you know. They don't have sidewalks or streetlights, which I don't understand. Why would you build a complex and not put those there? But that's okay. That's okay. It's nice. It's, it's very nice. And you what? see that I as see the vision that from MacArthur Park. From MacArthur Park. I see that from MacArthur Park. But I that's know that that's be there. that's you know. But the city isn't on board with you. No, there. you've been are. unable to convince them. The, well, you know, the commissioners that are there now uh, are not on board with it. But there's an election coming up, mm -hmm. 
and there are people that are running for that seat that are on board for that. Okay. You know, and um, and my question to them is, why would this is what I think? They have their own plans, and they're buying the property. They're going to level it, and they're going to build it so that. Um, um, upper middle class people can live there, you mm. know, and the poor people, the rest of us, I don't want to say gentrification. Exactly. That's what, exactly. That's, that's what's happening. You know, but what West, when I heard West talking about it, he said, West, but Poole. West Poole, he said, there's no gentries to come into the gentrification. I mean, you may want to do this, but where is the population going to come? Mm -hmm. And this seems to me that the council's thought is, if we build it, the people will come with the jobs rather than you have the jobs mm -hmm. and the people will come to that. You know, and I think that seems Which to be was the original uh, concept for MacArthur Park. You had jobs and yes. you, you built that housing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. But they're thinking now is we'll build the housing and then the people will come. And you disagree with that? I disagree with that because the, the only because of the location it worked in DC. Mm -hmm. You know, the developers went in and developed my neighborhood, and the people came in droves, mm -hmm. paying millions of dollars for that. There's not that population here. You know, um, it's you know, it's just it's just a dip, it's it's good. I belong to the National League of Cities, and they have been um, teaching me about the problems all cities have, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then how to help all city. You know. Zip solutions, but they have the clout that they can go to the federal government and get funds for if you want to do mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. along that thing. So gentrification is with all cities, mm -hmm. you know. And I've lived, I've lived through it, you know. So uh, on Capitol Hill, on Capitol Hill, yeah, yeah, I've lived it. Which is the northeast At, section, northwest, northwest, northwest section, yeah. Um, but to see it here in Sandusky is just, and and the people that you are putting out. I know. I mean, I didn't mind putting Joe Willie on because, um, <laughs> you know, with this speakeasy place. But, and you know, I'm changing the crackhead. But the people that lived next door to me were solid families. The, the, the families that were evicted. Evicted, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's. And that's nice. really what propelled you into it the Really, race. it's exactly what propelled me into the race. Exactly. Exactly. Cause but tell us about your other uh, uh, vocation. Your avocation, your 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 uh, in Cass area. Oh oh, oh what I do? Oh oh, I have a television show mm -hmm. that comes on every Saturday at three o'clock. It's called Standing on the Promises. Mm -hmm. And um, why did I why did I start doing that? Oh. It's in your blood. <laughs> well, it's in my blood for one thing. <laughs> because your father. But was because my father was a minister. But my father said to me, coming up all the time, if you were a boy, you would have been my preacher. <laughs> And then the other thing he would say when he was upset with my brothers, he would say, if you were a boy, you would have had your own church by now. <laughs> but why can't I preach, Daddy? Because you're a girl. You know? and, and that was the unspoken thing. You know? But the Lord has no respect of persons. And when he called me, you know, you know, there was nothing. Now, did he call you after you moved home or before? No, no, no. I was in Fairfax County. Oh, a very affluent county, but it's also a very racist county, and I was always the only black teacher. They hired you were the me. only. Yeah, I was for for yeah for one, you know. And then and then I went to Cleveland State. I got my master's degree. A person from the Urban League came to our class and said, "These are the school districts that are under affirmative action mandate." Now this was 30 years ago, mind you, and that they have to have black administrators. So I applied to Fairfax County, and I was accepted because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was under your assumption, y'all will be glad that I'm here because I'm helping you do this. No, <laughs> no, it was like, who in the hell do you think you are? You know, and it was like, but you are under an affirmative action thing. You you need me to be here. No, we don't. Well, we don't want you here. And did it get better? No, it didn't. It, well, it didn't until I had to go through a lawsuit because I, Reverend Brown, who died recently, and Daddy mm -hmm. was already dead. Mm -hmm. And Reverend, when I came home and I complained to Reverend Brown, he said, daughter, stay there. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants you there. So mm -hmm. from my generation, you did what your elders told you to. Mm -hmm. But I stayed, but it was terrible. Mm -hmm. And then so I had a lawsuit. You know, they never promoted me to be an administrator. I never, but all the other people around me got to be administrators. Whatever black teacher was with me, they would make her an administrator, but they wouldn't make me one. So finally, you know, so, I, but I won. 
You know, I won the lawsuit. You won the lawsuit. I won the lawsuit. And um, they transferred me to another school. When I got to this school, I had a black principal, Dr. Uh, Judith um, Jackson, who was the wind beneath my wings. Mm -hmm. She just let me, she just let so me. So then it worked. It worked. I never got to be an administrator, but it just worked. And then I got into par a partnership with the Northern Virginia Writing Project. Mm -hmm. I took an internship then with, with George Mason to integrate writing across the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so that got to be like, I love that. I would take classes with them. And then in the summertime, I would teach in the G George Mason at the Student Summer Institute for Creative Writing. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I connected with the Kennedy Center. The Kennedy Center's program is CETA, Changing Education Through the Arts. Mm -hmm. And what they did was, you would go to classes at the Kennedy mm -hmm. Center, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm talking about, Chuck. I do. And then the teaching artists would come to your classroom and show you how to teach uh, science through dance, mm -hmm. and math through poetry, and um, geometry through through painting, you know, and you would take classes for this in the center. And my principal allowed me to do that in my classroom. She allowed me to just expand. We had, I changed our whole school, my master's dissertation was on using in-school media to promote literacy. Mm -hmm. So we, had, we started, and this was like, this was a long time ago. We had a, started a television program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had a school song, mm -hmm. you know, Franconia Reads and Writes. We had, that was our, my, my thesis theme, Franconia mm -hmm. Reads and Writes. I had the experts from the Kennedy Center tell, showing me how to do it. Mm -hmm. I had the, uh, the uh, teacher consultants from George Mason that were helping me. It was just like, I was just like in a bubble of creativity. I just loved it. And then it went to the um, all year round school. Mm -hmm. So I taught in the regular school, but then in all year round, I still had my classroom. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, and there's nothing like creating with Fairfax County money. Oh. <laughs> there's no limit to the money it that is, they that they let is, you spend. It is the wealthiest school district. Wealthiest school, and you have access oh. to Kennedy Center and George Mason. I was having a, the absolute ball of my life, and then I had to retire. You know. But but so the Reverend Brown advised you to go back. He advised me to stay. And and, and I stayed. That was good advice. Ultimately, it was, but it, it was like taking castor oil again. It's like staying in my garden. Did you have to take castor oil? I did. Oil? It was called <laughs> Father John's. Didn't you take Father John's? I did not. I, I did. I knew about it. I was but, terrible. You know, we it were was, about the same. It visit. was brown. You know, and you took it every it morning when you went to school. Yeah. It was terrible. However, you, we did not get sick. You it know, worked? It, it, it absolutely worked. I'm telling you, living in MacArthur Park, especially in the beginning, was like taking Father's Jones. It's like, I don't, I don't, I have this vision, but I don't see how I am ever going to be able to accomplish this, you know? And really, if I hadn't got sick and had to be at Cleveland, I wouldn't have stayed. I would have chalked that $160,000 up as a loss you know, sold the building and gone back to D.C. But I was sick then, and I had to stay. And but you're good now. I'm good. Oh, I'm so good now. My gnomes, I love gnomes. I love Cleveland Clinic, you know. I'm good. I can, like I was telling, I was, <laughs> I was telling the, uh, um, the, the, the producer out at um, WGDN. Okay. I said, I got there at 1.30. And I said, look, at 2.30 I have to be at between the lines we have to go. You know, we have, you know. We can't chit chat to and so we're doing that. And then as I was going out, I said, "Isn't it so nice to run from one place to another?" <laughs> I remember when I couldn't even walk. Oh. You know, a year ago, I couldn't. I, I couldn't walk. How did that change you, though? How I, I mean, I, I've noticed a change in you. Um, I mean, you have incredible energy. You, you, you are so full of energy. <laughs> but when I didn't have any energy, when I couldn't even get off the couch. What, so what have you learned uh, from that experience? What, what is the best lesson you can take away from having been sick? Faith. Mm -hmm. Really. It, it has increased my faith. Faith is believing in things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. You know, and knowing that this this vision that you have of being well, then that's what the vision was of being well mm -hmm. is going to is going to come to pass. 
You know, I it it, it has such, so increased my faith more so than winning in Fairfax County did. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of mm -hmm. took that for granted. And I winning kinda, the lawsuit. Yeah, winning the lawsuit. You know, yeah, and, and, really, and the lawsuit alleged that you were being discriminated against. Is that right? Well, um, yeah, but it wasn't for just me. Right. It was because I had a little boy in my, I see a town in the gifted and talented center. Uh -huh. And I had a little boy in my second grade class who couldn't read or write, uh -huh. a little black boy. Unbelievable. How did you get to my classroom uh -huh. and you can't uh -huh. read or write? You know, and they were going to place him in a, in a, in a, in another school, you know, in a school for, that they tracked, they tracked back then. Mm -hmm. They tracked kids. And I wouldn't sign the papers for him to go because everything that we need to teach this boy to read is here. You mm -hmm. have a psychologist here, you have a reading mm -hmm. specialist here, you have... He deserves these He services. deserves to learn how to read just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And plus the kid was brilliant. Mm -hmm. He had them running in circles. He was so bad. He was bad. But he was the color of that couch. And you know... They had really, they had really paid. You think he was dark skinned? He, he was said. black. He was a black kid. And he, just one thing, he came into school and said that the Ku Klux Klan had approached him at the bus stop. I said, Jonathan, you're lying. You know, and, but the principal took him seriously because she wanted to be a hero or whatever. She wanted to show me that she wasn't prejudiced because, you know, really, okay, okay, fine. But she took this boy. And, and, and called in everybody but the National Guard, and he was lying. I told her he was lying. Okay, so, so now she's really mad. She's really mad. But she took him out of my classroom, and she gave him to an aide. You gave him to an aide? You give the kids that need the most help to the money. I'm the one who's making the most money here, not my aide who just came out of college. You know, and plus, you know, I had an aide in Fairfax County, <laughs> but not, you know, that's, yeah. And gave it to Jonathan, and I'm like, you know, we had an ongoing type. So the suit was, you are using the evaluation process as a means of discrimination and discipline, and that's you can't use the evaluation process that way. Interesting. Interesting. So, so I was on the evaluation cycle for five years. Oh. You, do you know what the evaluation cycle in Fairfax County is like? I, there is somebody who is in your room taking notes on everything oh you do Lord. all the time. You, I mean, the, you, you're not, it was terrible. So who was, was your, do you mind if I ask who your lawyer was? For Oh, 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 uh, Donald Temple. Okay. Donald Temple. Do you, oh, 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 do you remember, oh, this is a while, but you remember, well, but, ah, uh, what was that? It was a major clothing, major clothing corporation mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the D.C. area. The wow. boys came in the next day with the clothes on from that clothing line, but they had receipts from it, but the, clothes, the people in the store accused them of stealing the clothes. And Donald Temple was their attorney okay. and got them off. Just recently, Donald is, um, Donald is representing 10 female police officers in D.C. for discrimination. You know, he's like, he's, he's, he's one of the big boys, you know? <laughs> Very and, good. And look, look, okay, let's start. Okay, okay. We, go to, we go to um the meeting with the superintendent in D.C. In, okay. in, in D.C., in now Fairfax County. Fairfax. What was his name? Dominique. And, and um, I'm sitting out there waiting to go in and very nervous and upset. And they, they kept us waiting. So Donald opened the door of the conference room and said, we're here. And they pushed it back out. And I was like, oh, my God. So we get in there, and Donald's sitting at one end, and, and Dr. Dominique is sitting at the other end. And he asked, the, the superintendent asked me what the problem was and what can we do. And I started crying, which I do. And um, Donald said, sir, if I may, and he said, I did not invite you here. The superintendent saying this to Donald. I don't know who you are, but you will not speak until I tell you to speak. And Donald sat back. And now the school lawyer, who's right there, wrote a note on the thing, on the thing, and passed it over to the superintendent. And the superintendent read it and he said, You were on Nightline last night? <laughs> 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 Who could have worked that but God? Who could have worked that but God? And uh, Donald just kind of nodded, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? In the whole atmosphere in the place changed. Because it was 
right after that big case he had won. So he was on Nightline talking about oh, that. I gotcha, and so the I next gotcha. day that was my thing. And so then, um, and then, and then Donald said, the young man who wasn't taught to read, right, who Miss the Ashford, second grader, the second grader Miss Ashburn was sending for, that was me. Uh, Donald said that. Donald said that. Just like Kamala said, the little girl that was on the bus. Was me. That was me. Whoa! That turned the whole, the superintendent turned to me and said, "What do you want?" Uh, <laughs> you know, well, all I want, and then see, yeah, you know, all I wanted was my job back. Mm -hmm. All I wanted was my. All mm -hmm. I want to do is teach. Mm -hmm. Please let me just teach. If I if I had known better, or if Donald had counseled me, which he didn't, you know, I would have sued for thousands of dollars, uh -huh. but uh -huh. I didn't. Cause really, I didn't. I wanted my job, and and that's kind of. And you of, got your job. And back? I got my job back, and they moved me to that school with the wonderful principal. And then it worked. And then it clicked. It just clicked. So Reverend Brown was correct. Reverend Brown was correct, and Daddy was correct. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. Reverend Brown was correct. Daddy was correct. So I know MacArthur Park is going to be okay. I know that I'll be able to make a difference. I'm just not there yet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I will be. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, we've gone over our time, I imagine, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron is saying yes. Um, but thank you so much for sharing all those stories uh, and, and for being a candidate for city commission and standing. We so appreciate it. And you, uh, you are absolutely delightful. Oh, well, thank you. I had all these questions, but Daddy didn't even use and but that's good. <laughs> you did great. Thank you so much for being on Between the Lines. Okay. Thank Any you. last words you want to tell voters? Together we can. Very Together good. we can. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Between the Lines. All of our segments of Between the Lines are available.